During the Russian Civil War, it was not only rats versus whites, communists versus anti-communists. There were other factions as well. Think of the nationalist factions or the Allied Intervention Force and the anarchists, also known as the Blacks. They were led by Nestor Makhno. In this video, I'm going to talk about this person and his anarchist IDs. Keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher. I'm hustling history for you. And if you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell. If you want to support me additionally, you can go to my Patreon and PayPal page. In history, you have fascinating persons. Some are very well known and others are well known. But if you ask who was this person exactly, people often can come up with just one word, anarchism. And in this case, I'm talking about Nestor Makhno. Who was he and where did he stand for? Nestor Makhno was born on the 27th of October 1888 in Guliapolye, then a Katerinoslav province of the Russian Empire. Makhno was the fifth son of two parents who had been serfs until Tsar Alexander II abolished serfdom in 1861. His father remained at work at his former master. When Makhno was 11, his father died. And from that point on, Nestor Makhno's childhood was marked by poverty. He completed elementary school and started working as a stable boy. In 1902, he was 13 years old old and he witnessed how another stable boy was beaten severely by the children of his landlord. He ran to the head stable boy whose name was Ivan Batko and Ivan Batko chased his children away. Later the landlord apologized for the behavior of his sons. Batko then turned to Nestor and spoke the following words. No one here should countenance the disgrace of being beaten. And as for you, little Nestor, if one of your masters should ever strike you, pick up the first pitchfork you lay hands on and let him have it. This left a mark on Magnus' soul. He later quit his job as a stable boy to work on the land of his mother since his older brothers got married and moved elsewhere. The 1905 Russian Revolution left an impact on Nestor Makhno. His first political affiliation were social democrats. Later he joined local anarchists who advocated libertarian communism. After the failed 1905 revolution, Tsarist control was everywhere and a detachment of Don Cossacks were stationed at Guliapolye. Despite the strict control, the group of 10 to 15 people met on a regular basis to study the teachings of Proudhon, Stirner, Bakunin and Kropotkin. Magno recalled these meetings as follows. For me such nights, we most often would gather to meet by night, were filled with light and joy. We peasants, with our meager learning, would assemble in winter at the home of one of us. In the summer, in the fields, near a pond, on the green grass, or from time to time in broad daylight, like young folks out for a stroll. We would meet to debate the issues that move us. Between 1906 and 1908, the group carried out several robberies. Wealthy businessmen and landowners were targeted. For this, Magno spent 10 months in prison, but he would see more prison time. Mid-1911, he was dispatched to Moscow's central prison, the ill-famed Putyrki, which housed 3,000 prisoners at the time, a great deal of them political prisoners. There, Magno familiarized himself with the teachings of the socialist revolutionaries. He also met Peter Ashinov, who was sentenced for 20 years in prison and helped him shaping his ideas on anarchism. When World War I broke out in 1914, there was a split among the inmates. Patriots versus internationalists. 
Magno belonged to the latter category. Then, after the February Revolution, Magno was released from prison. And the now 27-year-old Nestor Magno, after several years, returned to his hometown of Goulier Polyam. He rejoined the local libertarian communist group. To them, he spelled out his analysis of the situation without waiting for the libertarian movement nationwide to recover its strength and start to organize itself. Anarchists ought to be in the vanguard of mass revolutionary action. His activism clashed with the opposition from certain traditional anarchist militants who were calling for a propaganda drive to target the workers and designed solely to familiarize them with libertarian ideas. You can see some similarities with Vladimir Lenin, who also advocated that a vanguard should carry out the revolution. However, there were big differences and we get to that later. Magno was elected as chairman. He advocated that the estates of landowners had to be handed to peasant communes without payment or compensation. The Social Democrats and cadets were against this and wanted a buyback policy. Only several huge estates were collectivized. Some farming communes made up of landless families and small like-minded groups settled in. Each commune numbered about 200 individuals. In the whole region, many communes came into existence. From far and wide, persons traveled to the now called Goulier Polie, Soviet to consult Magno. Also, Magno's followers disarmed the local police and set up their own militia. By now, his followers counted in the tens of thousands. Then came the October Revolution. The Bolsheviks seized power and the left SRs joined them. An anti-Bolshevik movement known as the Whites began to take shape and then also Ukrainian nationalists claimed an independent Ukraine. When the Bolshevik coup occurred, an 80,000 strong demonstration was held in Ekaterinoslav, now Dnipro, Ukraine, where the anarchists walked with black flags. The problem for the anarchists was that their intelligentsia was not in the region. Most of these were living in exile and then released after the February Revolution and settled in the big cities, Moscow and Petrograd. And there, they basically lived under the spell of the Bolsheviks and could not exercise any influence. A big difference between the Bolsheviks and the anarchists was that the Bolsheviks, they wanted to centralize control. The anarchists did not. Here you see some criticism directed at Lenin from the anarchists from several years later. You are in power in Russia. But what has changed? The factories and the land are still not in the toiler's hands, but in that of the boss state. Wage slavery, the fundamental evil of the bourgeois order, is still in existence. As a result, hunger, cold, and unemployment are inevitable. On account of the need to put up with everything for the sake of a better future and to defend that which is already won, a huge bureaucratic machine has been set up. The right to strike abolished and freedoms of speech, assembly and the press have been stamped out. The area of the anarchists was named the Free Territory, also known as Magnovshina. The Magnovshina has denied all statism and inspired to the building of a free society on the basis of the social independence, solidarity, and self-direction of the toilers. The Nabat, a Kharkiv-based confederation of anarchist organizations, aligned itself with the Magnavists. And therefore, the Magnavists, they became a strong movement to oppose their enemies. But who exactly were their enemies? Back to early 1918. At the negotiation table of Brest-Litovsk, the Ukrainian nationalists managed to get recognition by the Central Powers. The Central Powers moved into Ukraine and thus the Bolsheviks signed the Brest-Litovsk Treaty and recognized the Ukrainian Nationalist Republic. 
Yet in April, the Germans installed a new puppet government led by Pavlo Skorapatsky. It was during the time of the Ukrainian state, also known as the Hetmanet, Nestor Makhno formed his army, the revolutionary insurgent army of Ukraine, to fight the Skorapatsky regime. This army would operate from the free territory of Ukraine and fought later against the Whites while cooperating with the Reds. However, they were betrayed by the Reds. And how that all played out is what you're gonna learn in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Liam Devlin, Damian Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Terranova, Haley Mark Little Hill, Janusz Dojinkiewicz, Joanne Justin Trebel, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Luis Peschera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, and Mike West. If you like to learn about the other Russian revolutionary parties, apart from the Bolsheviks, I have an interesting episode for you right here. And if you want to learn about the messy 1918-21 period in Ukraine, also involving Nestor Magno's army, well, you can click right here. Thank you for watching. Consider becoming a patron because with your donation, I can keep doing this and expand. I see you later.